right, the performer that you're all about to spend some quality time with is an internationally known DVM, a uh, doctor of veterinary medicine. <laughs> Puppies. All right, uh, he is an author and a lecturer in the world of horses. Uh, today he brings his other DVM skills, his doctor of, what did he call it? Verified magic. <laughs> verified magic, yeah. I don't know who verified this magic, but it wasn't me. Robot you. Oh, you. Very, very well. Then, out. without much further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise and welcome Dr. David Ramey. Yeah! <laughs> Castle, you guys are in a very special place. This is the close-up gallery known to some as the Carnegie Hall of Close-Up Magic. Now, have, by a show of hands, I know we have some good friends and magicians, but a uh, show of hands, how many of you have not seen a lot of magic here, up close-up like this? Uh, several? Yes, okay. So, I have found, as I've developed this skill, that magic can be a little intimidating to people. They, they might think that I have powers. They're not sure what's going on. So what I'd like to do this afternoon for a few minutes is just sort of introduce you to some of the, the, the basic concepts of magic. So as you go out and you see magic in the magic castle at some other time or in other places, you'll have you'll feel a little more comfortable with the whole process. Shall, shall we? Okay, let's I'm gonna start with one of my favorite things that we do in magic. It is called a prediction prediction trick okay now in a prediction trick the magician starts by trying to predict something that the person is going to do so if you would please <coughs> let's, uh, let's just have you look in this box here would you like the red box or the blue deck the red one the re see i knew that was gonna that, I knew that was gonna be that's it that's a fairly simple prediction trick but nonetheless i think it's effective now in this deck i have a number of red cards and I have one blue card, and only one blue card, and on this card, I've written a prediction. I've written a prediction about something that you're about to do, or not do. And what I'd like for you to do, Becca, if you would please, is just touch any one of these red cards and just push it out to me, any one that you'd like. That one? Are you sure? Yeah. You want to change your mind? Okay, but everyone here has to acknowledge that I gave her a chance to change her mind. Because, see, I'm not one of those guys that likes to try to get you to pick a particular card. I want everybody to understand that you had a fair and free choice, right? Now, of course, in the prediction, in the prediction trick, as you might imagine, you're wondering, what did I predict, right? Yes. And I wrote it here on the blue card, and I said, oh, this is so great, guys. I said, you will not pick the eight of clubs <laughs> <laughs> and believe it or not and you could have changed your mind yeah she did not pick the eight of clubs right, <laughs> right i know my, i have fooled magicians all over the world with this you have you seen this before <laughs> Do you, do, you, do, you, do you know it's done? I mean, no, I'm just delighted. It's, I mean, it's, crazy, it's a crazy good trick. I did, you know what's really good? I mean, when I show people, you know, you could have picked the eight of clubs. It's kind of a late developing trick, I understand. But it's still good, I think. It's, yeah, okay. So let's... Uh, Let's do a little. Whoa. Let's do a little switch from that. <laughs> um, let's. Uh, I want to go from see where I uh, where I try to get you to pick a particular card. Uh, well, from where I don't try to get you to where I try to get you a particular okay. card. So this is an exercise in what we like to call card forcing. So we where the magician tries to get you to pick a particular card. So as I go through the deck, please just touch some card, any card that you like. Which, which one? This one? Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like you had a fair and free choice? Yes. Okay. That's what we try to do here. See, this is a little exercise for me. And what I do in this is I take a, a blank deck of cards. Have you seen the blank cards before? No. See, these, well, you can get these at magic shops and stuff. These are the cards that they use before they actually print the cards, okay? And in the blank cards, I put one and only one printed card this is so great i got you um you want to turn no you want to turn your card over 
Joker just for you, right? The, it's me. I put the Joker in the blank deck. It is the only card that is printed in the blank deck. Now, you guys haven't seen that before. Maybe you have. Do you want to know how I got you to pick it? Yeah. See, this is the whole secret of the trick. I used a little known card force called the subliminal force. Okay, you've heard of subliminal advertising, right? They have a movie and they put something up on the screen and you don't really see it, but your mind catches it. Same way this works, okay? As I'm going through now, you're just looking, but you're not really noticing, right? I put something in the deck. It's a little subtle to, to catch your attention here. You may not see it right at first. So, oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. So this is, here it is right here. The uh, red card says, pick me. And of course, that is your joker. That's the card that she picked. And that's, the, that's how this course works. Okay. Did, yes, I like that. Did, <laughs> did you not notice it was a red card? It was not red earlier. No. Oh, no. Did you guys miss it? It was a red card? Yeah, See, that's no. what's known as misdirection. See, all the talking. and You don't even know it's a red card. It was blue. No, see, that's... Well, I can tell I've confused you. And I'm sorry, guys, because good <laughs> magic is not about confusion. Let, let's go over the trick again. Okay. Do you remember anything interesting about these cards? They were all like... No, no, it's a regular deck of cards, yeah. No. But, but you did pick the only blank card in the oh. deck. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the subliminal force. That's, that's how it works. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the, so, yeah. you, you noticed that there was a joker in the deck, right? Yeah. Well, I, normally I don't use jokers in the deck, and there's a reason for that. If you've seen a lot of magic, you'll see that magicians typically will pull the jokers out of a pack, okay? And, and that's because the jokers will do a lot of magic for us, okay? Uh, see, it, again, the, see, if some of you are taking notes, that's okay. You know, it'll come in handy later. Uh, if you, t if, let's say, would you say that's about the center of the pack there? Are you good with that? Move it or what are you happy with that? Okay, I'm gonna take the two jokers We'll set them right here, about the center of the pack. Fair? Okay. You're, you're watching. Yeah, you see, I, should, I shouldn't do that. You thought I, you know, look. The jokers are right here in the center of the pack. You can verify for everyone. Yeah. Right where I told everybody that they, well, I'm not that kind of a guy, okay? So look, I'm going to take the jokers and put them right next to each other. Now, what I'd like for you to do is name any card, any card in the deck. Like that, the Queen of Hearts is now between the Jokers. Come on, that's wow. a good trick. That's, that's a really good trick. It is, yeah, right? May not be what you think, though. Okay. See, when I go like this, what happens is is one of the Jokers comes to the top of the pack, oh. and then the other one goes to the bottom. Ah. <laughs> so technically, the Queen of Hearts is <laughs> between the Jokers, and that's how the trick works. And thank you very much. <laughs> That works. I think it works. You're not that impressed, Eve. I, 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 what's that? Oh, well, here, let's do this. Okay, let Eve, these are these are the jokers, right? Yeah? Okay. Here's what I'd like for you to do. Just kind of reach over here and cut the cards. Cut about half the cards. Excellent. Now, remember this? Okay, that's not just theater. I mean, it's really good theater, okay? But it's not just theater. See, this is a signal to the Jokers. Yeah, it tells them to stop screwing around and get back to work. So when I go like this, the Jokers go back into the pack. I know. Here? Better be. <laughs> there she is! Oh! Yeah! <laughs> Enough with the card. All right, you guys have seen coin tricks, right? Yeah. Coins have their secrets as well. I'm gonna show you one of the little, one of the most beautiful coins ever made and one of the little known secrets of magic. You guys, have you ever seen these coins? No. You can pick them up, take a look at them. Here we go, wanna see these? Oh, they're gone. See, look at that. <laughs> These are what are known as walking liberty half dollars, okay? Um, they are 90% pure silver. They made them from 1906 to 1948. 
hear that nice sound that they make, that nice. And many people, like I said, think these are the most beautiful coins ever made. And you can see walk Lady Liberty walking on the front of the coin. You see right there? <coughs> but did you look at the back? Did anybody see? Did you look at the back? It's this whole secret to the trick. Right, it's the American Eagle. Do you see it right there? See the eagles right You see it right there? You saw the eagle, right? There? Okay. The eagle gives these coins their other name, which is the flying eagles. And I'll show you how this works. Look, if I take two and put them in my hand, and one goes into my pocket, how many should be in my hand? Two. Two. Right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Except, remember, the, the, the flying oh, eagles? Yeah, they're flying. flying. They, cause, yeah, they fly from my pocket back to my hand, and that's why I have one, two. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a simple trick to understand. It is all in the birds. Did you see you? You saw the birds, right? You guys saw, you did, did you? See, you saw them, right? I saw the birds. There, okay, yeah. right? Birds, yeah. Okay. Two go in the hand. One goes into the pocket. How many should be in the hand? Why, why three? Two. <laughs> what? See, oh, normally that's when people are really paying attention. She knows, you know, the, they fly right from my pocket. Back. The birds, remember the birds. One, two, three. Piece of cake. Okay. Last time, see who's paying attention now. Okay. You see the bird, right? Yes, I see the You guys see the birds, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. One in the hand, two in the hand, three goes into the pocket. Now, how many should be in my hand? <laughs> You're right, but it's kind of a trick question because remember they're birds. Sometimes birds will fly away. Yeah. <laughs> so the question of course is where did they go? In your pocket. What? Your pocket? No. You know, you've been watching. I can tell that. And a lot of people think they are in my pocket, but they're they're not in my pocket. See, these are birds. And birds always return to their nest. <laughs> oh, no. What? And those are the flying eagles, right? Oh, thank you. Now, do you feel like you've absorbed enough magic now? Because this is the point where I feel if my lessons in how magic is done have, have you know, worked, you'll be able to do some magic. Oh, yeah. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Let's hit that. Now, this, guys, this is an antique hotel bell. And uh, it is, um, it's, it's going to use as a little signal, and we're going to work together. Okay. okay? So let's, um, <coughs> those, I'll take these. Now, what I'll do, back is uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to do something. I'll just give a little bit. Okay? Okay. And then you do the same thing. Yeah. Start, yeah. Okay. okay. Hey, there we yeah. go. Yeah. I that very well done. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know, I know. That's why I wanted to start with something easy. Okay. Right. Now, this could be a little more challenging, but that's okay. Just spread it out here. I'll move them back this uh, way. This way? Bit. Yeah. However you want. Wait. There you oh. go. Yeah, sorry. We've got them upside down, Becca. <laughs> here, let me help you here. Just like this. It's okay. It's my first audition. It's her first okay. time on the stage here. Turn them over. Turn them over. There you go. <laughs> Spread them out. Cut, cut. Not bad. Yeah! Right. Learning her. Part two. Okay, wait. <laughs> Oop, there's one. I can see the confidence growing. I mean, this is <laughs> excellent. All right. Take the cards now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <Chris. laughs> right. Okay. Now, how are you shuffling? Um. Okay. I can try. Okay. So a lot of times, you know, it's just so you can show people it's a fair shuffle, a lot of times, you know, we'll, we'll shuffle like this, you can shuffle however you want though, it doesn't matter. We just want to show people that we're giving a fair mix of the cards here, okay? Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. You ready? Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
My lessons, my lessons are like sixty dollars an hour. Don't wait. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yes. Right. Face down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this is what we call the reveal. Okay, imagine this is known as the reveal. So, what you do, back <coughs> is you take the card and you look at it. Okay. And then you show it to the person that you're working with. And then you show the crowd. <laughs> oh. yeah! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, yeah! thank you very much for coming to the United Council of Days of Beats and Magic. Come back, see us again. I hope you had a good time. Thanks very much for being here.